We require four wins from four games to keep our job. That's it. No draws, no losses. We can't drop any points now after that loss against Sheffield Wednesday in the first game of the Championship season. So, I suppose that would be a great start to the Championship season. And also, it would make sure we keep our job. So, shall we get straight into it for the second time in Season 5? Roll the intro. It goes Pompey, 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 you're the team. Pompey, 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 you're the green. Pompey, you're the greatest and we'll keep following you. Yeah, we'll keep following Pompey, following the ballers in blue. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of season 5 of the Ports of Cream on Foot Manager 2018 and today we have two matches against Nottingham Forest and Huddersfield in the Sky Bet Championship. We've got to win both of them so let's get straight into it against Nottingham Forest. Good news though, before we go into the match, we did beat, was it Crew or Crawley? I think it was, I think it was Crew in the um, first round, no. It was Yeovil. I don't know where I got that from. We beat Yeovil in the Carabao Cup first round. That was a good win you know, to spare us on a little bit. Uh, Martin Skirtle had a particularly good game on his debut, 7.5, with the other defender, Christian Burge, playing very well as well on 8.2. So Liam McLean got the sole goal, and it was an off day for Connor Chaplin. So he meets with Watford in the second round of the Carabao Cup. But we've got to beat Forest, Huddersfield, Middlesbrough, and Plymouth. So let's start on a good note by beating Forest Day. We've gone with a 4 2 3 1 as usual with Gazaniga in goal, Kenny Watmore, Burgess and Husband at the back, Shenton and Roster are the two midfielders of choice, McGoughlin makes his debut in the league with Chaplin and Abita just behind the star striker today, Chris Long. Liam Macklin is quite uh, knackered, let's just say, after that game against the Oval and the game uh, last weekend. So let's get straight into it. Of course, um, we need to go and win this one. So really, I expect nothing for a, a win. We need to be simple. With our expectation. We just heard a motorbike being started up in the background. I apologise. But it is a lovely day. It's Monday. Bank holiday Monday. And it is going to be the warmest day in a while. So I hope you're alright with me keeping the windows open. But here we go then for the start of the game against Forest. Just make sure it is back on that 2D classic. Um, this is obviously being recorded before the first episode comes out on Monday. Um, so I'm not sure whatsoever what you, you guys think of it. What your reaction will be to it. But hopefully it will be a good one. Um, and I'm really excited to start recording this on a permanent base again. Just to remind a few folks, if you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to be doing this on a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday, all at 6pm, going along with the other series on the channel. But we've got some good possession in this first 15 minutes, 60%, and hopefully this highlight is a first goal for us. Rossiter, lovely ball. Ooh, that's a very near goal, a fantastic clearance. Well, fantastic goal kick from Gazaniga straight to Rossiter. And nearly in the back of the forest net, which is what we like to see. 57% of possession, though. It seems we're controlling this game at the moment. Um, I don't quite like the fact we've committed three fouls. Let's just stay on the feet and not... And Yeah, okay, we'll stick with that. We'll go quite direct. I'm quite happy with that. Um, but obviously, we need to win this match. So, a half an hour in. We haven't conceded yet, which is positive. And here we go. John Joe Kenny to Rossiter. Rossiter to Long. Long. Chaplin, we're crowding their box. And into a beater. It's a goal for Jordan Abita. It's his first goal of the season. I guess you could say that was a little bit lucky, actually. But a good assist from Connor Chaplin. Let's have a look at that goal in the view of the director. So, John Joe Kenny to Rossiter. Rossiter to Long. Long. Actually, as I say, we're just crowding the box. I mean, you look at that. There is seven of our players. Well, six. Look, feels like more. Um, you know, you've got the defenders back there in Gazaniga. But Chaplin. Um, you have got Chris Long. Shenton. Rossiter. Uh, McGoughlin, I'm guessing one of them is. Yep. Yeah, and Jordan Abita, who scores the goal. But Connor Chaplin... With the lovely flick back from Connor Chaplin to Abita. And it was basically one-on-one. -on -one, and that is a goal for Jordan Abita. And apparently the encoding is overloaded. Which is a little bit worrying on OBS. So I've tried to turn the graphics setting down. So hopefully the 3D um, highlights aren't as laggy. But you never know. We can just test that. Uh, for but Cummings for Forest now. Now to Ledson. Good defending by Christian Burgess. Now get it back out of our half. Kenny. Don't bugger about the bush now. Good ball from Watmore to McGoughlin. Let's see what he can do. McGoughlin into the box for Chris Long. Chris Long back to McGoughlin. Into the box again for Jordan Abita. Jordan Abita today, of all people, is absolutely bossing this out on the left wing. Some of you guys say that Jordan Abita shouldn't be playing in the left wing. He's a left back. But he has been fantastic. And today proves why he's got to get that left wing as you know as a, as a as a player who plays there all the time what a header from Jordan Abita he's used his head he's used his foot what what's what's the is it is it the golden triple or something like that I can't remember what it's called just go with your head your foot and I don't really know what else you're supposed to score with husband to Rossiter Rossiter to McGoughlin McGoughlin again playing well oh dear Burgess to Shenton Shenton to Chaplin in the box he shoots and did Connor Chaplin scores and we are 3-0 up 
against Nottingham Forest before half-time. I was not expecting this whatsoever. Obviously, we lost um, in the first game against Sheffield Wednesday. But we are playing absolutely fantastically today. A credit to our strikers. And Connor Chaplin scores his second goal of the season. And that's quite a tight angle, actually, for, for Connor Chaplin. But their goalkeeper, I don't know, quite know who it is. It is Pears. It's not Alan Pears, is it? It's a Ainsley Pears. I love it. Ainsley Pears for... Um, the Forest. For some reason, it keeps saying in code and overloaded, but hopefully that should be okay. But, wow. Surely we can't lose this now. I've got to tell the players, look, you know, it's not all over yet. Surely. Um, let's go counter-attacking, though, now, rather than anything else. We want to make sure that our players are, are back a bit more. Um, we'll do some mixed passing, but keep it more disciplined. Um, very fluid counter-play. Wide play, I think, seems to go well. Um, maybe run at the defence a little bit more, get them agitated, get a few cards on them. Um, any players that probably need to be taken off? No, it doesn't look like it. It's a real shame, though, because Chris Long really is the, you know, the strike today, and he's had none of the action. I mean, it's just been the wingers and Connor Chaplin have had the action. I mean, McGoughlin getting an assist, Shenton getting an assist as well, and Chaplin getting a goal and assist right back up to his best form, which is brilliant to see um, for the Portsmouth stalwart. But a beater into Rossiter. Rossiter has a shot from there, and if Rossiter would have scored that, that would have been beautiful. 55 minutes in here now. At the... Oh, God. What, what's the stadium called? Fratton Park, of course. How did I forget that? Fratton Park. And uh, this couldn't be going any better now. Okay, and so we're going to make a few substitutions. Charlie Cockett we're going to bring on for Shenton. Shenton's played well. Credit to him, but he's a bit tired. So we're going to bring him off. Uh, just change some of the roles around. And we will also bring Jack Harper on. Why not up front? Chris Long hasn't really delivered the goods today. Macklin is a little bit tired, so we can keep him for the next match. But 12 shots to four. We've been really dominating the game today. And it's brilliant to see. It'll be lovely as well. To get a clean sheet. Even though I think I've just jinxed that. Cummins for Forrest now. Cummins shoots. That's quite an awful shot. A little bit of pressure put on the other, by the defenders there. That's exactly what we need. Gazaniga puts it out now. Can we get it with McGoughlin? No, he can't. Clark to Barker for Forrest. Barker on a good run to Cummins. He missed the ball though. Burgess, Sweeney, Bannigan. To Sweeney. Good ball for them. Can we get this one back? Kenny. Oh dear, he misses out. It's into Carnu. Eastry's Carnu. And it's 3-1. Let's just tell the players... Um, to, I guess, I guess, tighten up because we don't want to concede another one. Uh, that's something we definitely don't want to do. But let's have a look at this one. So, Bannigan uh, to Sweeney. Good ball, to be fair, but John Joe Kenny really just misfooted there. Uh, a little bit confused. He could have got to that, but good stuff by Barker. And Carney puts it into effectively an empty net because Gazzani wasn't trying at all there. And he's looking quite nervous now, as he probably should be. Colky to Rossiter. I feel like a goal will kill off this game. Chaplin. Wouldn't it be brilliant if the Chaplin could get it? Chaplin keeps the ball. Lovely ball into the box from McGoughlin. Not quite. Colkett shoots. Oh, just over the bar for Charlie Colkett. Really nice to see the midfields like, going after a go at it from um, a range out. Yeah. You know, why not? I'd rather the players shoot. That's a criticism I have of Liverpool at the moment, particularly when I watched them against Chelsea yesterday. They just didn't shoot, and that really annoyed me. But um, McGoughlin dispossessed, but he's quickly got the ball back. McGoughlin into Chaplin. Oh, I thought that was in. I'll tell you what. In fact, with all of them, with all of the, with all of the shots we've had that I've seen on the highlights... Keep him a bit low and it would have been him. Seriously, we could have beat Forrest 5 or 6 nil, 5 6 1 rather today. But the most important thing, we are a quarter of the way there. Unless, unless Forrest score two in the next minute and a half. We are a quarter of the way there to getting, um, well, to keeping our job. Uh, no real update about the board changes yet. No transfers made. I'm quite happy with the squad, to be honest now. I don't want to unsettle the squad at all. Unless a big bid comes in, for example, for one of our players. Um, I'm quite happy to keep them here. So that's brilliant to see. A good win to get the morale up. As you can see, some of them are now on excellent, particularly Chaplin and Beats. But those two, really the best players of the day. So we haven't really got much time to rest because in only, only three days, we have a game away from home against Huddersfield. So let's go and play that one. And a day and a half later, here we are for the second game. It's a bit confusing, really, because I recorded the first game on Monday morning and I went to record the second game after my lunch, but it was just too hot. It was absolutely boiling yesterday. If you're watching this in the future, it was May Day 2018 that I recorded um, the first game. It was absolutely boiling yesterday afternoon. I thought, you know what, I cannot do this. I just couldn't function yesterday. And we are here at 7pm on Tuesday night to do this game. So hopefully it goes well. Because it's only an hour till the Tuesday Night Live podcast. And if you haven't watched any of those, they're over on Captain Goodspeed's channel. And I'm in them every single Tuesday. I'd absolutely recommend them. Apart from next Tuesday, and it's on a Thursday. But for today's game, we've got a, for exactly the same lineup. And considering we've had a bit of a day off and just been thinking about how we make sure we win this match, at the start, we've got to make sure we defend. Now, I've changed some of the roles around a little bit. And I'll just show you this now. Just a little bit of a 
thinking for me. Now, the fullbacks have gone from defensive fullback on defence to fullback on defence. It pushed them back a little bit, and they are solely reliant on defence. And then the two wingers then are just pushing up to attack then. I feel like it's fair because those two are now defending that the wingers now attack, help Chris Long up front and Connor Chaplin. And then uh, Shenton's now been pulled back to a defensive player. We've lost to full back to a box box midfielder to support the attack. But I feel with four men supporting the attack, I feel like it's okay anyway. Um, and I feel like the defence is hopefully shored up a little bit. We're gonna not we're gonna not prevent short distribution because I don't see the point. Pardon me, I don't see the point of powdering it up the pitch. I don't see the point. At the end of the day, to win this match, in which we've got to do in this one, the Borough one and the Plymouth one um, in the next few games, we've got to make sure in every single game that we pick up three points, or else we are going to get the chop. So. We've got to make sure we win today, and an early goal will be a brilliant start. So that seems like we've had some early possession, but Nelson Oliveira for the Huddersfield very nearly getting an early goal on for them. That's certainly what we don't need, but I'm a bit worried in the fact that we got beat, obviously, in the first game of the season against Sheffield Wednesday away from home. But we're 12 minutes in here at Huddersfield Stand. I don't quite know what to think at the moment. We've had the most possession, definitely. Um, so do we, we're going to keep it on counter. Uh, but maybe change to very fluid. It feels like we're you know, going for the possession game, which I'm more than happy with. But they've had all the shots. So looking at the stats, it's a very confusing pitch to look at. Not very happy that we're conceding quite a few fouls. That's not in our nature. Uh, we have got a highlight though here. Rossiter on the edge of the box. Shoot. And what a finish from Jordan Rossiter. From a Connor Chaplin corner. Jordan Rossiter has just belted that one from outside the box. And that, believe, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, is his first... Portsmouth goal. It's his second season is for Josh Jordan Rossiter and that is an absolutely beautiful just a curved ball and really um, curved balled and confused Angus Gunn. I'm sure it's his second season. It is, isn't it? I'm sure it's his second season not going mad. Yes, it is. He played 35 goals last year. Uh, sorry, played 35 games. Only got four assists. But that is his first goal on the sheet. So that means obviously now let's get into the logistics for it all. If we don't concede now then we are going to get the full three points. I don't really know what to do about the lighting really now, unfortunately. Um, I'm just looking on OBS. There's not really much I can do because it is still light. Um, maybe if I close the curtain, I don't really know what that's going to do. That's just going to make it a bit darker and maybe focus on my face a bit more. Uh, maybe put the light on. This is like, this is brilliant. I'm going to do all this live. You know what? Let's, let's have a little bit of a test. This will be putting my fan on because I had that on last evening. Um, I don't, no, I don't, I don't want to put the fan on. There we go. That's off. Uh, yeah, that's a lot better now. Just I've got a bit of a shadow in the background, but we can't know much about that. Uh, but the, the fan's still going. Oh, for God's sake. Right, fins are going well, but I know you're capable of better. Absolutely. And let's go for the second half. This is possibly the most unprofessional video I've ever done. But then again, none of them professional. And none of them are any good. So, you know, no change there. But the Huddersfield, it's Owen Coyle, isn't it, on the ball? I can guarantee Owen Coyle will really be playing for Huddersfield. I very much doubt it. And in fact, doing all that fancy stuff has made Scooby's amount of difference. So that's a bit annoying. But uh, a good clearance there by John Joe Kenny. Uh, Rob Hall was on the ball for Huddersfield there. And very much nearly got it back into the box. So it's Grant Hall. I think he's Rob Hall. God knows. But Gerard Berger on the ball. I think Michael Brighton. It is definitely Michael Brighton. Jack Rodwell. It's a good signing for the uh, Huddersfield. Reed to Oliveira to Paul Nuttall. The UKIP leader. Or former UKIP leader rather. And oh my god. What defending was that? That was god awful. It feels like they've dominated ever since half time. The manager gave him a bit of a Hanard rollick in his captain good speed would say. Um, but I don't quite know what's gone on there. Joe Nuttall has put it to all Brighton. Or Brighton's chipped it over. And it was a bit of a dodgy header from Oliveira. But really... I feel like Gazaniga should have got to that one. So 50 minutes in here, and now we are at a little bit of a disadvantage because I've got the momentum and they've scored. Um, and that's not particularly good. We've got Long and Chaplin both injured, so I feel like we might be able to change the tactic here a little bit um, and go for a 4 triple 2 and make the most out of this situation and bring both MacLinden and Jack Harper on to see what I can do to deliver the goods up front. Um, Andy Carroll playing for uh, Blackburn. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll play McLean as an advanced forward and Jack Harper as a poacher. And then we'll change you to a support pack. He doesn't like playing like that. And you don't either. And you've not been playing very well either the wingers. So, you know, if they want to moan, I suppose they're going to have to, aren't they? Um, but apart from a few players, we're not really playing particularly well. That first goal all of a sudden seems like a bit of a fluke. And it's a bit of a worry. Maybe we could close down the likes of the goalkeeper. But maybe that could come later. But we need a goal, really, to get us back in front. We're doing quite well, to be honest. I feel like Huddersfield got relegated last year. Um, did they? Oh, they got promoted last year. 
That makes the win, you know, it should be a little bit easier. I'll tell you what, though, to have the likes of Oliveira down in League One, unless they've signed them all now, it's a pretty impressive squad, I have to say. Uh, Jack Rodwell. Two. Oh, no, no, it's not. McGoughlin. Intercept. Lovely stuff. McLinden. Now we need to make this count. McLinden to Harper. Harper in the box. What's he going to do with it? Put it over to McLinden. Unlucky there. Shenton, though, back to Harper. And it's now for Oliveira for a counter attack for Huddersfield. Can Christian Burgess stop that one? He certainly can. He can certainly slow it down a little bit. That will help massively Oliveira. To call, but a bit more pressure on lads. Rodwell. Rodwell to Coyle. Can we intercept that one? Yes, we can with James Husband. Now keep it. Oh, Shenton. Oh, it's a penalty. Oliver Shenton. A disaster from Oliver Shenton there. What he was doing, I have absolutely no idea. And if we give away a goal from this, that'll be... Oh, he's missed it. Oliveira's missed it. Oh, and Nelson Oliveira has missed it. Literally, we've been given a get-out-of-jail free card there in the fact. Oh, my God, McLinden scored! It's a little bit like that playoff final. I think it was Watford and Leicester. What a finish from Liam Mac... I was not expecting that at all. Oh, my God. We have been given a triple get-out-of-jail-free card. I can't believe that what's just happened. Harper to McLinden. Pow! From Liam McLinden. He certainly had a go. And it was the most beautiful and fabulous strike... That I have seen for a long time. Now we've got to make sure we shut up shop a little bit now. What a goal. But let's just breathe after that. Triple get out of jail free in the fact he scored. Shenton didn't get sent off as well. And that Oliveira didn't score that penalty. Wow. How much this game would be different if they scored that. But I feel like they could go and score now. Or oh, Brighton is the box for Oliveira. To Nuttall. And it's a goal but I feel like it's offside. Let's have a look. Nuttall scores. But it has been ruled out for offside. Oh, this is a good game we've got in store now. Right. <laughs> this is exciting. We need to make sure that they don't score for the next 20 minutes and we get two goals, uh, sorry, two wins from two and our first away win of the season. That just seems brilliant. Right, we're going to go with someone a little bit more aggressive on the uh, in opposition instructions because I feel like that would be absolutely necessary. Right, 20 minutes to go here at the John Smith Stadium. Can we pull this off? Every game we play now is like a cup final. We need to be winning all these games and as it stands, I don't want to jinx anything, but as it stands, we have won two out of the four that we need. That's brilliant. Mac uh, McLaughlin, sorry, to McLinden. McLinden, can he now play the part of a sister? He certainly can! Jack Harper in the back of the net. Both of them, really inspired substitutions, both getting an assist and both scoring and combining with each other beautifully. I wonder whether this season will be the season whether Jack Harper gets his lucky break. Obviously, last year, he got a bit of an injury, Jack Harper. Some of you are not remembering who Jack Harper is, but Jack Harper... He's come to Portsmouth via Brighton, Real Madrid and Malaga. It's quite a crazy story that the young Scotsman's got. But he has had quite the career. He had quite a bit of an injury last year, but played quite well when he was um, playing. But the two, Harper and McLinden, combining beautifully today. Rossiter to McLinden, to McGoughlin. It's McGoughlin in the back of the net. We are absolutely routing Huddersfield now. We are rampant, as it says there. Twice in the space of two minutes we've scored. And this is a definite foregone conclusion now. Huddersfield, as soon as we scored that shock second goal, have just completely gone to pieces. And literally, Nelson Oliveira will be ruining that mistake so, so much. Because it's cost his team the game massively. And now we've got the momentum. They definitely would have had it else. And, well, of course, anything can happen if they go and score here, for example. But, wow, what a last 15 minutes this has been. It could have been two or three minutes ago in the video. 2-1 to Huddersfield. And it would be game over in, as far as I'm concerned. But it's now 4-2. Huddersfield have got one back. That's a little bit of a worry. Tell the players to tighten up. Uh, let's get another defender on the Connor Masterson. As what uh, as Burgess has a yellow card. Feel like, you know, he's not going to be doing um, as well there. But we have 15 minutes left. We need to make sure they don't score two. And I feel like we're going to be able to do that. Come on, we've got 12 minutes left. In this tie against Huddersfield. And where wow, the attacking players have done exactly what we need to. And Cody overloaded again. Don't quite know what's going on about that on OBS. But five minutes left. Surely. Surely we can um, sort this out. Now it's going quite slowly. I'm a bit worried. Macklin chase after the ball. Hall's been dominant in the air. Here we go. Another one would really help us there. But Shenton's lost the ball. And now Shenton is going to be shented uh, off. Oh my god. Oliver Shenton's been sent off. There we go. That's massively disappointing. We're going to have to send... Rossiter to a defensive midfielder now and put McGoughlin and Abita now back um, into the position of... Actually, we can play them as left and right midfielders. Never thought of doing that before. 
But to be fair, Shenton deserves to go off. He won't be in the team for a while. He's had the penalty. He's had that one that's given a red card and another challenge to give him a yellow card in the first place. And his lack of discipline has been disgusting. But all that matters really for us today is that we have beaten Huddersfield 4-2. We came in the lead first off. Then they scored one. They could have potentially scored two. We went straight up the other end and scored with McGoughlin and Jack Harper and Ryan McGoughlin got their first goals of the season. And Ryan McGoughlin's first goal, of course, for the club completely to make sure that we won that game. So if you enjoyed that episode, Joe... Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking to you, Joe. It's all right. If you enjoyed that, that episode, folks, make sure to leave a like on that one. And I'll see you on Friday for the remaining two games in this cup final segment of the season where we need to get 11 points out of 50. We need to win both of those games to reach that target after being beaten by Sheffield Wednesday in the first game of the season. So we're playing against Middlesbrough first at home and then Plymouth away from whom to whom. Sorry, I've turned all posh. But they are two pivotal games. Make sure you tune in at 6pm on Friday on the channel and subscribe and as well enable the notification if you want to make sure you know when that video comes out straight away. Subscribe for manager content, retro content in terms of PS2 games, PS3 games, Xbox 360, PS1, all the hell you want as well as 4-7 car reviews on a Saturday and of course all of this on a weekly basis. What's not to love? Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys on Friday with the third and maybe final episode ever of the Ports of Korea Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.